Let us take a look at what we want to cover next, which is really how can we go through and apply all this stuff about phases and different views and phase filters? How quick can you actually use that in a, a real little construction project so you get a sense of uh, really, it's an easy story at the one on the one hand at a high level, but when you really start getting into the nuance, there's all sorts of little things you have to pay attention to. To illustrate this, what I'm going to do is open up a different project. I'm going to open up, oh, what am I going to find out there? It's called Ranch House, and you can open that one up if you'd like to follow along. Where was it? Session two? Yeah, it's under session 12. Oh. So it's hanging, it's out on coursework too, if you want to pull it down from there. Let us just take a look. This is actually a real little house. This is a house that I got called in to take a look at, oh, many years ago now. Little ranch house, this house is all over San Jose. It's a real common little house. Developers built it in the late 50s, early 60s. If you want to take a look at it, oh, it's got like a front door, like front and center. We've got a garage on the right side, a couple windows on the front and a kitchen area. As we move around, it's got some bedrooms, just two bedrooms and one bathroom, little living room area. Very simple little house. If you want to look at it in the first floor plan view, you can sort of get a better sense of what's going on. We have, oh, the kitchen area right up front, which is a little bit odd. Dining room next to it. There's a living room area back here. It's a very <laughs> funny space right in here that they sort of use like an office. I really think this has been remodeled at some point in the past because it just feels very odd to me. It has this little laundry room over here. It just kind of feels funny. Okay, as you go on down the hall, there's two bedrooms, a master bedroom and a secondary bedroom. And over in here, there's like one bath that is shared by the two different bedrooms. Okay. Back in there, they use it like an office. But it's sort of a very strange room. The entrance is way down here, front and center. Yeah, it's, it's definitely odd to me. That's often where the dining room is and the kitchen sort of where the laundry is. I think this got... Yeah, it's, you, you, you want to rearrange this, well now's your chance. <laughs> okay, so, and here's what they, so what they asked for was, they wanted to take a look at the whole kitchen. The idea was that the kitchen has a couple problems with it. One is, it sort of is very isolated. So if you're here in the kitchen and there's something going on here in the living room, you really don't have, you have very little connection. You know, people tend not to like that. You like to be more connected these days when you're doing your work in the kitchen. Okay, it's also got this island in the kitchen. And the island is kind of okay, but it's really, it's awkward in the sense that it's here, you can sort of walk around the edges of the island, but you can't really put any cabinets in there. There's not enough room. It's sort of there with a lot of circulation around it, but it's really not that useful to you in terms of what's going on. So one goal was to remodel this kitchen and open it up to what's happening here. I think you're onto something good in terms of this room, this office over here not really making too much sense. So we can take a look at that. And then back over here on the bedroom side, the idea was we have the two bedrooms. We'd like to have either two or three bedrooms over there and definitely a second bathroom because this one bathroom and everyone sharing the bathroom just feels really tight right now. Okay, so that was sort of the design program, what they were after. Yes, for them. Right now it's just sort of, yeah, it's just an island for chopping in the middle. Okay, but yeah, it could definitely be more useful. Okay, so we started with that. Let's go ahead and kind of think about how we'd approach this in terms of phasing and setting it up as a renovation project. And I'll start by just looking at the phases. You'll see there already is two phases set up, existing and renovation. Okay, and that's kind of okay. We can just leave those as is. If I wanted to, I could put sort of an after in here. Oops, I put it in the wrong place. Let me go ahead and, oh, I can undo that, or I'm going to combine this with the previous. Call that renovation again. What I want to do is put one after. There we go. And I'll call that, oh, kind of future exterior, where they want to do something in the backyard eventually. Okay, I set up my phases. The phase filters, I'm not going to worry about these too much because these are set up by default the way I like them. Kind of the default ones are pretty good. 
I can even leave the graphic overrides alone because the graphic overrides in terms of showing red for demo work, showing gray for existing work, again, I don't need to change that. What will tend to happen is in your offices, you'll have your own standards, and you'll just sort of defer to those standards, because you don't want your project to be unique from everyone else's. So you'll start having standard ways of doing that. You won't revisit it every project. You'll just got to keep on doing the same thing over and over again. Yes, for some. What's the best combined thing that you just put in just combine two phases? How can you use that? Oh, what that is is all about if I create a phase, and I actually want us to push things together into the same phase, I can say combine it with the previous, and that'll push all the phase created and the phase demolished dates into the same, it, what is it? It's basically how you get rid of phases. <laughs> yeah, so I used it to get rid of a phase because I inserted one where I didn't want it to be, and then added it at the end. Exactly, so if I would combine existing and renovation, Anything that started in existing or renovation would all start in existing. Anything that got demolished in existing or renovation would all get demolished in existing, and renovation would disappear. It just sort of merges them together. Or sort of merges the starts and the ends. Okay, so I got my filter set up. That's good. Let me set up some views just to help me. And what I'm going to do is take that first floor plan view, and I'm going to create some different views that are set up with filters to show me the way I like to think about this. So I'm going to rename one. I'm going to say first floor existing, or as built, if you prefer. OK, that's going to be set to first floor as a view property. Click on over here. And it's also going to be set to, oh, let me go to existing. I'm going to set it to be previous plus new. If I say leave it at show all, it'll show me the things that are added in phase two also. So I don't want that to happen. I'm just going to say show me previous plus new as of phase one. And that'll be OK. Next up, I'm going to take that as built. And I'm going to say let's duplicate that. I'm going to rename this to be first floor proposed or first floor renovation. Again, whatever you prefer. You just have to have a scheme that's going to make sense to you so that you know how to use it later. Okay, now, for this one, I'm going to do a few more changes to it. I'm going to change the view property to be phase two instead, renovation, but I'll leave it at previous plus new. Notice it's going to gray out the existing. Finally, I'm going to create one more of these things. I'm going to create a demolition plan. Duplicate <coughs> this. I'll rename it First Floor Demo. And if I change its properties, uh, view properties, it'll be Phase 2, because I'm looking in Phase 2 back at what I demoed in that phase, so Previous Plus Demo. OK, now I'm setting those up for the first floor plan view. If you want to, just kind of work ahead or catch up with me, I'm also going to do the same thing for the 3D views, because I like to have 3D views that do that same thing, that have demo, existing, and proposed. That way I can sort of work fluidly in any of those views and be pro producing what I want. So here's 3D. Same thing. I'm just going to duplicate this three times. Duplicate. I can duplicate. And duplicate. Okay, let's rename them and change them independently. Again, a lot of work to set it up first. 3D Aerial. That's going to be existing. Change its view properties. Phase one existing and say previous plus new. Okay, next up is going to be rename that. We'll do the proposed. And I'll change its view properties to be phase two. I think I got the wrong one there. There it is. View properties for phase two. 
renovation. And then finally, the demolition plan. Okay, so we'll finish that out. I know that seems like a tedious little chunk of work to do up front, but it'll pay off in the end. Open that view, look at its view properties. Again, we'll put it in the renovation phase. Previous plus demo. Now, I've just done it for these two views. I could also do that for the elevations. I could do that for many different views, stuff like that. And ultimately, you probably will do something like that. But this will get us started far enough with our design to get going. OK. So good on a bunch of different views, different phase filters. We're ready to go. OK, let's go over to not the as-built plan. The as-built plan looks pretty good here. I could put some annotations and tags. I could put some dimensions on here. but. It's pretty much ready to go. This is the way the house looks today. OK, let's go to proposed, because that's where we want to start making the changes. We're going to say, in phase two, in the renovation phase, I'm going to make some changes. And I'm going to do a couple of different things. I'm going to take out some things that I don't want to keep. I'm going to add in some new walls and some new cabinets and things that I want to propose for the design. OK, then I want to look at sort of really what the difference is between those two different phases. So to start with, let's just go for some of the easy stuff. Like here we are over in the kitchen area. They really just don't like this kitchen. I don't really like the kitchen. I could choose that countertop and I can say edit its pr in place its properties. And I can say demolish it in the renovation phase and do that. Or what I like to do is go over to the modify tool, grab my demolition hammer, and just hack away at it. In fact, I know that I am going to sort of actually have to move some of these objects in here, like the refrigerator and the stove. So I'm going to demolish them. And I talk about demolishing versus moving versus deleting, because there's sort of an important point in there. OK. You tend to like to demolish things between phases. And you like to demolish them because deleting them has the effect of removing it from all the phases. You don't actually want to delete it from the database. You just want to say you're no longer here. Okay, So you demolish it. That way, it still stays in the existing. So your as built still accurate, okay, as opposed to deleting. The other thing I'm going to warn you about is the whole notion of moving. If I'm going to put that refrigerator in a different place in the scheme, okay, I can't just move it. Because if I move it, what will happen is it will move back in the initial phase, too. It will move in the as built, because things can only have one place. So you really have to almost think that I'm demolishing it and putting it out in the garage. And then after the renovations, I'm moving it back in again. Okay, So there's something a little bit weird about moving items. But you really can't just move them. You have to sort of demolish them and add them back in. Okay, So it's a little bit weird, because I know I actually am probably going to hang on to those appliances. But just as part of you know, Revit and how the modeling works, you can't just move things. It doesn't sort of understand that a single object has two locations. That'll come back and haunt us in some other ways in just a minute. OK, I demolished some things. That's looking pretty good. Oh, let's take a look at this wall over here. Well, let's get rid of the dining room. We don't really care about that right now. OK, let's take a look at this wall over here. Now, if I go ahead and demolish that wall, I'm going to take out the entire wall from here all the way down to the bottom. And I may want to do that, but if I want to keep a little leg of that wall, maybe where the cabinets are going to be over here, what I need to do is actually subdivide that wall a little bit. So here's the issue. When you demolish, you're demolishing entire things. Every once in a while, you don't want to demolish the entire thing. You only want to demolish a piece of that thing. So what do you do? You've got to come up here to Modify, and you find the Split Tool. And the Split Tool gives you a nice little exacto knife. Let me zoom on in here. I'm going to just split this wall by kind of getting right over the edge of the wall, split it into two pieces. Now I have a piece over here, and I have a piece over there. Okay. Because I now have two pieces, I can go back and get my demolish hammer and demo that piece and get rid of that. Okay, So that's kind of a very common thing. If you can go ahead and demolish the entire object, great. But if you want to sort of just demolish a piece of it, 
you find yourself splitting your walls and things into sub pieces so you can get rid of the parts you want and keep parts you want. Okay, so that's one nuance of demolishing you have to know about. There's this whole idea that, you know, if I really want to split that wall, let me come on in here, get in real close so I can split it very nicely at the corner, and then I demolish this section of the wall. Let me zoom out again. Okay, that section will still stay around. Okay, so get used to this idea that you can sort of split things to demolish them. Okay, another little variation on demolish you have to worry about. And that's what happens when you have hosted elements, that's elements in a wall that are hosted by the wall, and you demolish the wall or you demolish the hosted element. What happens in both those cases? So let's take a look at that and sort of see what I mean. Oh, one idea is over here, there's this wall that separates sort of the bedroom from the closet. If I want to get rid of that wall, it has a closet door and it has this bedroom door in it. And if I demolish that wall, what's going to happen is the hosted elements are going to go away too. Just sort of makes sense. If you take out the wall, the, the doors and windows have to go away too. Okay, so that happens. Oh, I can just demolish that little leg of wall. That's pretty easy. I can even demolish that little leg of wall. A little unclean on the corner there, but we'll fix it up. Let's come back over here. Sometimes, though, you don't just want to demolish the whole wall that contains the elements. You actually want to demolish the element that's in the wall. For example, if I wanted to take out one of those doors, what I can do is instead of demolishing the wall, is just demolish the door. And when you do that, this happens. What it actually does is it fills back in the wall. Okay, and that actually makes physical sense. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but let me go ahead and show it to you out there in the proposed floor plan. I'll go to the back of the house and show you. The idea is as follows. Oh, back over here on the back of the house. Oh, let me even hide that roof just so you don't look at it right now. I can see inside the house. One of their goals was to go through and instead of having this window here, have a French door here that came on out to the outside of the house. Okay, so what can I do? I'm going to demolish that window and it'll fill it back in. Same thing, let me even get rid of that door over there. I'll demolish that door and fill it back in. Now, as I demolish things, the key is that back over here in the original as-built, okay, all those things are still around. If I come on over here and take a look at the properties of that door, you'll see that all we've really done is say, you were creating an existing, you're demolished in renovation, but the object is still there. I haven't moved it. I'm leaving it exactly where it is. I'm just saying disappear in phase two. Okay, and it's filling itself back in again. Okay, so you can demolish objects that are sort of existing, and it'll fill them back in. Oh, let me come over to the back of the bedroom. We'll demolish a few more things over here, and then we'll start adding things in instead. Oh, this back wall of the bedroom is sort of a good example. Let me zoom out so you can see it a little bit better. I actually want to sort of just blow out that whole back wall of the bedroom and make the bedroom bigger, kind of just take it back out this way. So if I want to get rid of this wall and the window, kind of right there, what I can do is I'll grab my demolish hammer. Eh, a little too much wall there. I don't want to get rid of all that wall. So what I'm going to do is do some zooming in. I'll get my split tool. Okay. And then I can just demolish that one side over here. Okay, get the idea? Okay, so for demolishing, you got to always select the element and just either change its instance properties or you can just use that demolish tool. The key is, though, if you're going to use the demolish tool, since it's going to implicitly pick up which phase you're demolishing in, you have to be careful to be in the right view. Okay, If you do it by the instance properties, you can then sort of see explicitly what you're doing. So demolish is a lot quicker, but you have to watch out which, view, which phase you're in. And if you do something wrong, go ahead and just like uh, get the property and like uh, change it to be the correct phase if you get it the right way. Okay, You may need to split walls. 
okay, when you demolish them, so that you get just a portion of them. Okay? And you have to be careful. Some objects can be split, some objects can't be split. Sometimes when you define something in place, and you can't split it very easily. So you might have to make two copies of it and sort of subdivide it into two pieces, half that you can demolish and half that you can kind of keep around. So every once in a while, I get myself in trouble and need to do something like that. But when you demolish a hosted element, like a window or a door, the opening will be filled in. That's pretty straightforward. You generally want that to happen because, like if we took out that door in the wall, they wouldn't leave a hole there. Demolishing that door means basically filling in the wall and putting the studs in there, putting the finishes on the outside of it, just kind of patching the hole. Yes, Hazan. I have something that may not have code. Code that varies with different form items. Yeah. Is that usable if you want to just see a little bit of a texture? No, what, what that's for is actually if you bring in a CAD object, like a DWG object that was created in AutoCAD or another tool, they're often grouped together so all the little forms and elements are sort of one big object. Explode will break it into the sum elements. So it's kind of like when we do modeling in place in Revit, we do these different forms and they're tied together into a single in place object. Explode breaks that into all the sub pieces. That's what that's for. Okay. It sounds like it should be like demolished, but it's not quite. Okay. Now as you go ahead and we're working, we're going to start adding some things in here, and that's going to work out just fine. I just want you to be very cognizant of the idea that you have to always try to match reality. If you match reality, you'll stay out of trouble in that the reality is when I'm renovating a house, I can add objects and I can demolish objects but I can't stretch objects. I can't reshape objects between. You, you want to. You think you ought to be able to. And Revit makes it look like you should be able to stretch the objects, but you can't. You don't stretch objects. You either demolish them or you add to them to create the new shape you want. Okay. Because if you stretch or reshape things, it actually reshapes them back in the existing floor plan. Okay. Let's go ahead and show you how that works and just kind of drive that point home. So. I'll do that. Oh, I'm back over here. I'm looking pretty good. Let me start adding some things back in here. So in terms of my proposed, oh, here I am on the back of the house. What did they want? They wanted some French doors. No problem. I'll find some nice French doors for them. I'm going to go through and get these nice double glass doors. Oh, that's a nice looking one there. I'll put one in the living room, put one in whatever this room is. Maybe put one over here on the side. I'm adding them in. Because I'm adding them in, they're going to show up in the proposed floor plan, okay? but they're not going to show up in the as-built. Okay, the as-built still shows the old wall, the old window, the old door. Okay, so it's taking care of it for me. As long as I get things in the right phase, the view will show me what I want to see. So I can go ahead and add some things in, like doors and windows. Notice when you put in the doors or windows, it cuts the hole for you in the proper phase. And I can even delete something in one phase and add it in in the next phase. And it does a pretty good job of making sure that the thing that got filled in then gets taken away. It's actually very smart about that. OK, let's go ahead and add some walls in here. I can go through, let me go to the first floor plan proposed. Oh, I'm not going to do very good on my kitchen design here, but I'll just sort of uh, show you that I can add some walls in. For example, I could, let me get some interior walls. Just say that, you know, I want it to do like that, then come over here, and then something else is going on over here. And again, this makes no sense from a design standpoint, but I can add things in. Oh, even here in the kitchen, let me go in here. I not only can add walls and doors and windows, I can add things like cabinets in. So for example, I can place some cabinets in this new phase. And I'll say, oh, let me get that base cabinet. You can put a bathtub in there too if you want. I'll use that one in a little while. There's a nice two-door base cabinet. I'll go ahead and put it in here. Got to rotate it. Just using all my sort of you know, standard Revit techniques. There's nothing special about doing it in phases. I can align AL align to get to that wall there. 
I'll AL align to get to this wall here. I can even lock it to that if I like. And then, oh, maybe I'll just kind of make a run of these cabinets. I'll copy this one from here over to there. And I'll copy again from here over to there. Okay, so I'm just making a little run of cabinets. Okay, that's all happening in phase two. So if I have an interior elevation, it'll only show up in phase two's interior elevation. It won't show up back in phase one. Similarly, on the floor plan, it's not showing up over there. Those cabinets are only showing up in the phase two floor plan. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll add to the back of the house. We have that whole issue of they wanted this new master bedroom. Let's give them something back there. Maybe for this, what I'll do is actually draw on out. I'll start over here and kind of come on out. These blue lines were something about sort of the area I could build in. That's what. That's where they came from. So let me put some walls in here. <coughs> I'll use my sort of, oh, standard techniques. I'll make sure I choose the nice white wall type to get what I like. I'll bring that up to the top of the walls. Say the exterior face. And I'll just do, oh, kind of from right here, coming over, coming over, come on down. Notice it didn't do a very good join right there. Let me do an alignment. I'd like my new face of the wall to align with my existing face. So I can say, oh, how about that face? Aligns with that face. What's that? Thank you. I should. And even in here, let me kind of show you what's going over there. That's an example of what I'll call just a bad wall join. It just didn't clean up very nicely. It actually is joined right there. It's just not showing it to you. And this is the, one of the most frustrating things. People hate this. You're looking at that. You see how the little blue dot actually is on the end of the other wall? Okay, That is joined. It's just having a hard time showing it to me because it's not sure to show me where the end of the wall was in the previous view, in the previous phase, or should it show it to me for this one? So you have to give it a little bit of help. This is only a graphical thing. It actually doesn't affect the integrity of the model, but if I choose that, there's a wall join tool. And if I stop clicking, it will catch up with me. There we go. I can say and rotate through some of the options. Okay, There it sort of healed it up. Basically, you can sh tell it to sort of try different options to try and clean up that little wall join. It's like one of those little frustrating things. Everyone hates it at first, but it just takes a lot of work to get things to join up nicely between different phases. Say again? Yes, no worries. I will undo. Okay, so here's this you know, uneven join. I'll choose the wall join tool. I'll hover over that join and click there. I'm trying to get it to join there, but it's even sort of confusing right now. Okay, there it is. And now there's this question, it says that I can basically try to change the configuration of the join. And next just rotates through different options until you finally find the one that actually heals it up the way you like it to be. Oh, no worries. It's definitely, you know, of all the things we do, that's, again, one of those like really confusing, weird ones. You know, but it's just sort of an artifact of, oh, I wish the tool was smarter about that. So here we are, we're hanging around out there. We got our fabulous uh, proposed room. Oh, well, maybe that thing needs some walls in it too, or doors. Maybe a nice window on the back side of it. Kay. The problem is though, we don't have any floor in that area. So let's take a look at that. Okay, you look at this, you know how to reshape a floor. You are so, so, so tempted to click on that floor and say edit its boundary. Because you know that's what you do all the time. I Oh, I just want to click on that floor and I'll just edit its boundary. Oh, this will cause no harm at all. Come over here, I'll just change the boundary. I'll do a nice little trim. TR for trim. Oops, if I can get it. TR for trim. TR for trim again. 
I'll say finish. Oh, I have a fabulous floor. It's going on out there. Everything's perfect. Until you go back to your as-built plan and you notice there's this giant tongue of floor sticking out into the backyard. Okay, so ooh, hmm, that's not too good. Let's go back over there. Okay, we need a different strategy. And what we need to do is as follows. Let me undo that one. Undo that. I'll just cancel out of that. Sure. We'll go back to the original floor. Here's what I need to do instead. Instead of doing it that way, what I need to do is not, oh, I have to resist that temptation. What I need to do instead is come over here to floor and just create a new floor right next to it. I can again pick the walls, that's going to be just fine. For the boundary, what I'll actually do is use the pick tool and just pick the edge of that existing floor. That way I'm going to get a really nice seam between the two. It'll hug up really well. That new floor is going to have some properties. You can choose the wood if you like. And when I say finish it, I'll have the new floor and oh, we're pretty close, not quite there. But at least it's only in this phase. Okay, We're down to the problem of, well, I got the floorboards running one way in the old phase, and I have the floorboards running another direction in the new phase. Okay, And that direction that the pattern is shown, that's actually just something that's uh, kind of graphically there. We can rotate that. Let me show you how you fix that. If I would like those to match, what you need to do is actually just tab to get one of the floorboard lines. And I can rotate that 90 degrees. And that'll make them even. Okay, but always be thinking about these things in terms of, okay, you're not going to go ahead and stretch or reshape things. You don't stretch the ends of walls because it stretches them in the previous view. You don't shrink the ends of walls because, again, that changes them in the previous view. You always split them and then either add or delete. Yes, press on. Yes. That would actually work. Let's take a look at, here's actually what you, know, what you have in mind. Oh no, let's, let's play with it. It's actually a very good option. It didn't used to exist. That's why I don't use it so much. But it's actually, no, please remind me, because it's a good one. What it is is like, for example, now that floor is generic. I change its properties. I have this little guy, match type. Match type will copy the type off of one element and copy it over to another element. It can be used for window types, floor types, roof types. Whenever you want to match something, it's actually the easiest. So I can basically go ahead and grab that floor and then paint it onto that floor. And what it does is it's really just changing the type properties. Okay, So very quick way, if you aren't quite sure what that is, just grab it and match the type. It'll save you a step. Okay, So things are looking pretty good. Hang around, look at the proposed. Okay, we're looking pretty good back here. We got a floor under that. We're looking very fine. Now we haven't been paying very much attention to the whole issue of demolition. Okay, it's sort of been being taken care of by itself. But if you want to sort of see what's going to have to be demolished, I can go over here to the oh, aerial view of the demo. Let me rotate it around. Let me even hide this so that we can sort of see inside the house. Oops, that's the one I want. What mode am I in? I'm cropped. OK, hide that element. Those things that are dashed right now are the demolition items. If I shade this view will actually be showing up in red. So that's kind of incredibly obvious for someone looking at it. OK, which things are the things that they need to demolish? Okay, Same thing in the floor plan view. If I go to the floor plan view, the idea is it's showing me all the specific walls that have to be demolished, highlighting those. And that is you'd like to give that to your contractor and say, OK, go after the red things. That's a very simple rule, <laughs> but you know, simple is good. OK, let's go ahead and we'll add one more thing to this thing. And that is oh, a roof over that back section. 
Adding roofs turns out to actually be one of the harder things. Because roofs, well, you sort of know that roofs are sort of generally hard in the first place in terms of trying to get all the boundaries and all the slopes and everything to work out. You know, this one probably has a fairly easy roof to tie in, but there's a couple different strategies I use for roofs. For this one, I can sort of even guesstimate what's going to happen with a roof. I'm going to put a roof over here, and I know how it's going to creep up on top of the old roof and kind of tie in. And we'll do that. We can kind of show how to make that work. Okay. Um, yeah, let's start with that. Yes, let's do that. Okay. And I'll tell you about the other techniques. To put a roof over that thing, let me do it this way. I will go through and go to my roof tool. I'm in proposed. That's where I want to be. I'll say let's do a roof by footprint. At the top of the walls is good. And I'll go ahead and just choose some boundaries over here. For this last boundary, though, I'm not going to go through and choose the boundaries yeah, and define them as slope defining. I'm actually just going to draw a line over there. And what I'm even going to do is stop short. Because I don't quite, quite want to touch that wall just yet. Let me do some trimming, TR. And even for this very back line over here, let me turn it off so it doesn't define a slope. So if I finish that, I get a roof. And that roof is not too bad. You know, it's not quite the right slope I want right now, but it's sort of close to what I want. Okay. The idea, though, is that roof needs to creep on over and kind of be on top of this roof. Okay. Let me show it to you from the side view. It'll be more obvious there. If I come over to this view, see, there's the problem. It's sort of too tall. It's not quite right. I can even see that it doesn't really match the existing roof. That seems to have a different profile than the new roof. Okay, I'd like to go ahead and match those things. Let's go back over here. I'm just going to try your trick first, Zom, because I think it actually may work well. Let me try the modify match type. Let me uh, grab that existing type and try just painting it onto this one. See how it did. I think it got the type just right. I don't think I have my slope just right, though. I was hoping I was going to grab the slope. But if it didn't, I can check the slope of this roof. I need to have the slopes match, too. Let's say 2 cut square, 8 inch, 312. Let me look at these ones. 2 cut square, 8 inch, and 312. I'm just trying to get those two things so they're going to match up nicely, you know, having the same properties. OK, let's see if we can get this to work. The idea is as follows. What I'd really like to do is just join those two roofs together. Okay, Come back over here. We can go ahead and join those rule to roofs in a couple of different ways. I can actually just come on up and draw the line. It won't be a slope defining line, but draw the line that's going to be at the 45 degree angle. What happens is if two roofs are actually at the same slope, we'll join at a 45 degree angle. And that we know, just sort of as the, the math of what's going on. However, uh, there is a tool built into Revit that helps us with this. It's called right up here under editing and joining the geometry. It's called joining and unjoining roofs. And I might be able to use that one. So let's see if we can use that as a first line of attack. And based on how it does, we'll either decide that it worked well or decide that we need to do it ourselves. So I'm going to choose a roof and say join or unjoin the roof. You choose an edge of the roof. And then you choose a face that you want it to join to. And it tries to join. It actually did pretty good on that side. Let me show you what it did. It did good on that edge. Let me try on the other side. I've been having trouble with this all day, so I suspect it's not going to work, but it's supposed to. Edit, join the roof. I'll grab that one. I'll choose that. Nope, it's still not quite getting that side. Well, actually, it looks like it did. That's what I'm trying to figure out. 
I'm very curious because it looks like it did the join. I've been interpreting it that it just didn't do the join properly. I don't know. Shading with edges. Oh, you know what it's got to be. This is going to sound really, really weird. It's off by like a layer of material. Somehow my two little roofs are not quite at exactly the same height. Because what's happened is, on this side, it actually has like this extra little layer of material. It's kind of like it's skinned over there. I'm going to figure out what's going on there. I don't know how to fix that right offhand, so let me demonstrate the second technique that will actually work in case this doesn't happen or it just doesn't work for you right away. Okay, And that is to do something like this. If I edit the roof and edit its footprint, the new roof, Realize that you can go through and, oh, let me do it from the top of the roof level. Okay. You can go through and sort of manually adjust these things. So there's sort of this point about when do you fight with Revit to get it to do what you think it should do, if you know what it should do. Like, you know, wh what is the trade off between just sort of <laughs> trying to get it to do it automatically and just forcing it to do it yourself? Okay. And there's definitely sort of a trade off in there in that. Every once in a while, when you know what should happen and Revit's just not cooperating with you, you're actually better off just to do it yourself. For example, for this roof, I happen to know that this roof is going to come creeping on up at a 45 degree angle from both those two different sides. So I can spend a lot of time trying to debug why Revit won't do that for me. Okay, and I may not have that much time tonight. So instead, I'm just going to draw some lines at 45 degrees since I know that's what the geometry is going to be. Let me trim those out. I'll take out that line. And I know those two shouldn't be slope defining. When I finish that roof, see if I can look at it in three proposed. There it is. It's kind of tied in the way it should be. So I only want to bring that, dry, try to drive that point home because there is definitely this thing about working and fighting with Revit, especially when you're doing remodels, where sometimes if you know what the geometry is, it's easier just to sort of force it to be that way as opposed to trying to get the mathematics behind Revit to do it for you. So, so don't be afraid to do that. There's definitely a time where you know better, <laughs> you should just tell Revit what to do as opposed to uh, trying to convince it that it should do it the way that you think it should because that's a little bit indirect. So reshaping roofs is one of the harder things. It, sometimes what I'll do is if I will actually go through and draw an entire roof over the, in, or the roof over the entire structure, including the new and the old, just to let Revit figure out what the angles are going to be, okay, and then go back and make roofs and pieces to sort of be the existing and the new, Something like that. So what I mean by that is. Like, if you weren't quite sure what that roof was supposed to look like, what I could do is just take the whole roof off. Well, in this case, I'm doing it just because I'm going to quickly show it. No, I shouldn't delete it. I should hide them. Yeah. Oh, that would be. That actually, let's fix that. That's actually very good for them. Let's like, yeah. Let's do it the right way before we sort of teach everyone sort of a bad technique. So I could take those two roofs. I can hide them temporarily. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll draw the roof. And if I come through, let's see if I can do it as a big uh, tab click. Ooh, check that out. Finish the roof. Say no. But I can use that technique to sort of figure out where the roof should be. Okay, and then after I've done that, it's a new roof. What I need to do is basically unhide the elements. Oh, they're up a little high right now. Okay, and I can sort of figure out what the difference is between those two things. <laughs> Okay, so don't be afraid to go ahead and sort of use Revit to generate the geometry to give you a template to work from. And then from that, you can go through and like, uh, you know, make the pieces separately. But roofs and roofs of our renovations are definitely sort of a very hard thing. So, yes? 
Yes. In this proposed, and then would have done the same thing. It might not have them look exactly the same as the old route for the other part of the gene, and that's why you wouldn't do it in the next five years. But you then if you would have demolished it, it, you know, it might it it might have turned out a little bit different. Oh, exactly. Well, no, actually, w w yeah. In practice, what I'll typically do in a case like this is I'll actually just probably keep the new roof joined and just using annotations on it sort of indicate the new part versus the old part. Um, no, well, yeah, you would control that just in terms of, you know, because you're not giving them the actual model. You wouldn't give them a plan that shows demolishing it. Uh -huh. So there's always sort of what you put in the model, then there's what you actually put on the plans. <laughs> okay, and they'll follow what's in the plans. So, no, it's, this is definitely like one of the weirder concepts in terms of trying to come up with the right thing to do. Yeah, it's, yeah. So I'd probably use this more as something to help you understand and generate the geometry. Okay but then not keep it around. So go ahead and try and reshape that roof to make it match what you want it.